you can be taught certain things, but I don't think you can really be taught to be an actor. The, the drive to be an actor is just something you cannot push under the carpet and get rid of. It, it's there and it, it will out. You're only a professional in repertory because you're paid. You might still be an amateur actor, but if you become professional, you need to get paid for doing it. Uh, and you learn all sorts of tricks in rep, where you're, go you're learning one play and playing the one that night. I mean, all you're lucky enough to do is to remember the lines and say them and not trip over the carpet as you go off, you know. So lots of things you, ha you have to unlearn, but it does give you uh, the confidence to get on the stage and try and entertain an audience for a couple of hours. So it's all good training. Oh no, it's super. One wants to be in a long run because it's lovely to be associated with success and you've got to pay the rent and the tax man. But after a fortnight I feel I just cannot go on repeating it. Again it comes to be this spontaneity of acting. Mm. I just feel uh, it, it, it's like ask, asking to me, and I'll, uh, I've done it mind you, and I admire actors who in plays that run for four or five years. I drive me around the bend, I couldn't do it. Only, not because I get bored, but I, I, I feel I just cannot, cannot keep on repeating. Rather like asking a, an artist to paint the same, exactly the same picture every day of his life. He couldn't do it. Well, he could perhaps, but they'd all, they'd all get progressively worse. And that's what I feel happens to my performance. But I still think the theatre is an, the, the only training ground, and still my favourite form of being entertained. But I love them all. I love, love them. I love filming. That's a great. The challenge of filming is, is super. I think it's still you're doing pretty well if you get four minutes actual film time a day. And as most films run for about what, an hour and a half to two hours, you can work out how long that takes. That this is, comes to the technical, what I mean by uh, the technical side, and as far as an actor's concerned, he really should know exactly what not only he's doing in the script but everyone else is in, in the, the, the script as written so that you know how uh, you're going to react. I don't like the word technique as applied to any acting but filming is a very technical medium because not only do you have to uh, remember your lines but you've got to hit a mark without looking at it uh, you know with your foot because if you don't you're not in the lights and you've got to find the light uh, and you've got to remember what you do in the long shot, so that when it comes to your close-up, you do exactly the same movements at the same time, else the editor's in trouble, he can't fit it all together. So, it is, you see, I think most people seem to get the impression that uh, filming, you, you sort of get up when you feel like it, go down to the studios, uh, uh, have a tremendous affair with your leading lady, then have breakfast, and roll on the stage and say a few lines, and then spend the whole of the night carousing. It's, it's never been my experience. <laughs> it's always getting up about four, getting down to the studios, and having your toupee nailed on and saying, right, be on the set in five minutes, we're working till midnight, your part's been changed and all your best lines have been given to the producer's secretary. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> what is so marvellous if you're playing Holmes, you've only got to read the books again, I reread them because I read them all, you know, I wrote 60, I think 54 short, uh, 56 short ones or four long ones. And everything is explained in there for you. He had f about four pipes and they were smoked for four different reasons. And the one his favourite was a little black oily clay pipe. There's never any mention of a meal from Not that it means he didn't smoke one, but when you're given such specific details by a writer, I believe follow that along. Uh, but the reason that Meerschaum came was that the actor, uh, William Gillette, who was the first one to use it, on the stage, you see, found it so tiring to hold a pipe in his mouth and Holmes never stops talking, <laughs> that he found if he, he got this pipe and it rested on his shoulder blade, you see, and he was able to, to um, otherwise the jaw got so tired, you see. And that's how that uh, uh, anachronism came about. Not quite an anachronism, but I've, I've never let Holmes, when I've played, and you see one, there's always one on the mantel shelf, but I never knew that. I use the ones that are said in each story. Then after William Gillette, when the early talkies came in, Arthur Wontner was the Sherlock Holmes. Mm. And to me, he still is the one who looks most like him from the Sydney Paget drawings. And then um, there were one or two others, uh, but then the great one, of course, was Rathbone. I was lucky enough, I think only because one's got sort of aqu aquilinish features, you know, and that, that um, 
and that, that I think helps if you look a little like the candidate that people expect you to be. Because I must say I have been accepted as a, as a sort of definitive Holmes, which is a jolly nice thing to have mm. said about you. I don't quite agree with it, but then that's not for me to say. As long as other people do, they're the ones who, who should judge that.